In today's video, we'll be exploring how to ensure your AI voice agent has the highest level of uptime using both LLM and voice fallback plans. If you've ever had to deal with the frustrations of both voice and LLM provider outages, you know it is essential to have a backup plan to maintain your reputation as a developer and maintain uptime for your production agents. So in this video, I thought we'd go through some simple configurations to ensure your agent remains operational in case something does go wrong. Let's dive in. First, let's talk about the default methods used by VAP to mitigate these provider outages. Now, VAP already helps by employing default model and voice fallback logic. For example, if an LLM model goes out and your agent agent isn't equipped with a fallback model, VAP automatically chooses the best available fallback model if the primary one fails. So we have a primary model up here. We may receive a pipeline error, e.g. that model for some reason isn't working. We'll move to a fallback plan and by default, VAP here chooses the best available model and 99% of the time, if you are using OpenAI, this will default to 3.5 turbo. Whereas if we had our own custom fallback plan, we could specify what exact model to go to in the event that something does occur. Similarly, with a voice fallback plan, again, we'll have a predefined primary voice, we'll receive a pipeline error to which we will go into a fallback scenario. And VAP by default, chooses any available voice at the time. Compare this to our own custom fallback plan where we can have a range of options to choose from in the event our primary or preferred voice fails. So this may be moving to 11 labs and a secondary option may be a Cartesian model and a third is a Play HD model, allowing us to have a bit more flexibility when it comes to choosing exactly what voices and LLM models to use in the event of an error. So while VAP does ensure call continuity with its own fallback methods, we want a bit more control over, again, what specific models and voices to choose from. So you may be wondering, well, how exactly do we do this? As you might guess, we achieve these fallback plans via VAPI's API. And today I'll show you how to exactly use this to add those fallback destinations. But before we do that, let's take a step back. We'll head into VAPI's dashboard with a new templated assistant. Take Leo, for example, just a template assistant. And suppose we have our model here set to GPT-4.0. We have our voice set to something like 11 labs with Sarah. And if you're familiar with building agents out only on the dashboard, you may have noticed by now that there is no settings or guidance within the dashboard for setting these fallback models in both the voice and model section. And this is exactly why VAPI's API framework is so important. However, if you're not so familiar with building these agents out via the API, don't worry, I'll show you exactly how to add these fallback mechanisms step by step. And the first thing we need to do to edit an existing assistant, take Leo, the template assistant we just created, is to retrieve the underworkings and configuration of this assistant. To do that, we need to have the agent schema, which like I mentioned, is the basic blueprint or configuration for our agent. So to retrieve this schema, we can go ahead and copy our assistant ID from the top here. We can go ahead and copy that and we'll need to head over to a platform like Postman. We can create a new request at the top here by clicking the plus button. And this is what we'll be using to retrieve our assistant schema at first. So essentially we need to get data from VAPI's endpoint to retrieve information about a particular assistant. And in this case, the endpoint or URL that we are getting this assistant from will be like so, https, API, 
vp.ai forward slash assistant forward slash our assistant ID that we can paste in. We are navigating to Vapey's API under the assistant endpoint with a specific assistant. And this is the assistant ID we just had copied. Next, we'll need to add authorization headers to tell Vapey, hey, I actually own that assistant. Can you give me some details about it? We can do that by heading over into headers and our key name is going to be authorization with a capital A. Our value is going to be bearer with a capital B space, our Vapey API key. To retrieve our API key, if you don't already know by now, we can go to our dashboard under account API keys and our private key will be here. We can copy that, come back over to here, paste it, making sure there's a space between the R and your key. When you've got that in there, we can go ahead and submit this request. And this will retrieve, as you can see, all the configuration and underlying workings of our agent. And this includes our voice, the model we use, their provider, as well as the model for the LLM we are using. And the two main objects, as you may guess, that we need to change here are going to be lying in the voice and model objects. So now that we have our agent schema, how do we go ahead and add or implement these fallback mechanisms and update this agent accordingly. What we can do now is create a new API request. And instead of being a get request to retrieve information, we're going to change this to a patch request to update or append an existing agent. And similarly, the URL we had just used from our previous request is going to be the same here. We want to update this agent ID with a new schema that includes our fallback mechanisms. And like we did with the headers in the previous request, we'll have to add that here too. So again, authorization with a capital A, bearer space your API key, paste in here. When you've done that, we can go ahead and head over to body to the right hand side of where it says headers here, click raw, and now we'll be able to send some payload information that includes our updated agent schema. We can go back to our previous request response and literally just copy the agent schema as is. Back into our patch request, we can paste that in here. And now to reduce any pipeline errors, we can go ahead and add our fallback options for both the voice and LLM models. But first we need to remove any unnecessary data, such as our ID and organization ID, as well as the created at, updated at. And if you scroll down to the bottom and you have is server URL secret set, we can get rid of that as well. We're just clearing out any useless information that won't allow this patch request to submit. And now we can go ahead and start implementing these fallback mechanisms. If we refer to the API documentation for voice fallback, we know we need to add a fallback plan object underneath the voice section. And this will include a primary fallback option as well as a secondary option. And we can add as many as we like. One or more will work with this structure. So it's really up to you on how many fallback options you want here. In this case, I'm going to show you just having two fallback options should be satisfactory. We know the structure should look something like this. So let's go ahead and implement that. Basically, when we're updating an assistant in Postman, we can make the changes directly here in the body. So we can hit enter under the provider here and we'll just add fallback plan, making sure to capitalize the P there and ensuring our syntax is correct. Semicolon, open curly braces, enter. And now we can start to add the different providers and models. We can start by specifying voices, semicolon and open an array, enter, open bracket, enter provider. And this is going to be our first fallback object. So we'll hit provider colon and we'll add Cartesia as what's specified here. And we'll actually copy this voice ID here as well. After the ending quotes, we'll hit the comma, enter. And now we can put the voice ID, making sure that I is capitalized. And we can go ahead and paste that ID in there. Now we've just added our primary fallback voice by Cartesia. Our main voice we're using is 11 labs. So maybe we want to fall back to a different provider, Cartesia with that voice 
ID. And we can put anything we want in here. We'll add another one, open curly braces, provider similar to what we had done before. And maybe this one, we wanna use play HT, comma, and the specific voice ID, making sure that I is capitalized very well. Making sure our syntax is correct. Once we've added our fallback plan under our provider, be good to go and send our request over. You should see a 200 response. And now our agent has been updated with a fallback plan specifically for our voice. So what about our LLM? We go down to under model and where we see our existing model, which is GPT-4.0, we can start to implement this fallback plan also. You'll get a normal response from a get request for your assistant ID, which places the provider at the bottom of your content. And what we can do is actually move this to a more logical position, which would be under our model and we can just paste that there. And under this, we can start to add a fallback plan. So to do that, we can add fallback, capital M-O-D-E-L-S, so fallback models, and then we can open an array, which are those square brackets, enter, quotation marks, and now we gotta specify our fallback model that we are going to. For example, we may, if 4.0 doesn't work, want to go to 4.0 mini, or any other model that we choose from. All we have to do is write it in like so, GPT 4.0 mini. And what we can do is comma at these braces, and that is it. Hit send, and we'll get a 200 response. And there we have it. We've gone now from a basic assistant with default fallback plans to a more robust and customized assistant with our own fallback models. So this ensures us our agent is going to continue to be working even if a model pipeline or voice pipeline error occurs. So now if I were to go back to our simple get request that we did at the start with that same ID and hit send to retrieve our schema, you'll see our fallback plan has been appended to our original agent as well as our model fallback as well down here. This is what we're looking for a simple but effective configuration to ensure your agents are achieving the highest uptime possible. So guys, that is it for today. If you enjoyed or found this useful, be sure to hit the like and leave a comment below. If you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I upload weekly, but that is it for today, guys. Until next week.